Okay, here we go. We're a little late today because we are on the road and we are in Petawawa, Ontario. But you can see Quebec on the other side of the Ottawa River here. And um, we're going to start with a lamb goes uncomplaining for okay. a cheerful day. Uh, sad subject. The this setting the setting was chosen specifically by one of our viewers. Yes, we need to speak up out here because he planned it ahead. Yes. This is where number four hundred thirty eight. Okay. <laughs> of sinners bearing and laden with the sins of earth none else the burden sharing goes patient on grows weak and faint to slaughter led without complaint that spotless led to offer he bears the stripes the Son, the Father said, and free my children from their dread of guilt and condemnation. The wrath and stripes are hard to bear, but by your passion they will share the fruit of your salvation. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Father, yes, most willingly, I'll bear what you command me. My will conforms to your decree, I'll do what you have asked me. Oh, wondrous love, what have you done, the Father his son desiring our salvation oh love how strong you are to say you lay the one will to the grave who built the earth's foundation lord when your glory i shall see Taste your kingdom's pleasure. Your blood, my royal robe, shall be my joy beyond all treasure. Measure. When I appear before your throne, your righteousness shall be my crown. With these I need not hide me. And there in garments richly wrought, as your own bride shall we be brought to stand in joy beside you. Whew. All right. Matthew 26, verse 57. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now, the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death. But they found none, 
though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent, and the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? This is a strange place to be reading a uh, text like that, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, in, it's peaceful now that the lawnmower is done. Uh, it's it's beautiful. Um, and, and here we see, you know, the darkest, cruelest sort of uh, verses of the Bible. Um, I've heard people preach on this question if you were accused of being a Christian would there be enough evidence to convict you these days people go when someone is accused of a crime they typically will go search through the person's social media history there was a recent mass shooting and a news article I read about it says this person has has uh, almost no social media history so it's like so how how in the world can we know what he was thinking or who he is or anything about him um, you have to have people testifying to what you're like or what he said or what he did at different times. Um, but with social media, you go back through and you see all these things you ever said. People are trying to tell college students or high school students these days, watch what you put on social media because it stays out there. And, you know, when you go apply for a, at a college or when you go apply for a job, uh, all somebody needs to do is search that and they see whatever dumb thing you did or dumb thing you said or inappropriate photo you posted and uh, and they they've got you right if people look back through all of what you talk about what would they what would they see what would be the if people called witnesses to say well this is what he said to me and this is what this is what she talked to me about and and went through all of those conversations what would they convict you of could they find some offense you know this is what's happening to jesus in this trial they bring all these people one after another oh, i heard him say this and jesus has been speaking publicly uh hour after hour day after day in all these places many people have heard him and they're searching, we have to find something on which we can convict him. And they finally get these two men to agree that he said, tear this temple down and he would rebuild it. Even that, I'm not sure how you would identify that as a crime, except uh, maybe blaspheming against the temple or something like that. Um, but it's not until the high priest asks Jesus, are you the Christ, the Son of God? And, and Jesus says, uh, if you remember what he says to Judas, you've said so. You've, you've said it yourself. He, what he says to Pontius Pilate, are, are, are you a king? You've said so. And now he says the same thing to Caiaphas. And it is an oblique way of saying, yeah, and you know it. You've said so. And you're going to see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Jesus convicts himself from his own mouth to make to make it crystal clear that this isn't rumors this isn't an accident 
This isn't uh, something Jesus was trying to get away from. This is not uh, what other people said about him. Uh, it's not a false accusation. This is who Jesus is. He is, he is the Christ, the Son of God, and he will come on the clouds of heaven. If, if that first part is true, then that second part is true also. And the part that is false, you know, the part that has no effect, is the part that comes after that they, that they consider him worthy of death, that they are going to work their will on him, that they you know, uh, overpower him, uh, striking him and so on. Because this first part is true, that he is the Christ, the, the anointed one, the one who was to come, the Son of God, who will come on the clouds of heaven, then none of the rest matters. Tomorrow we'll see Peter. If only he had listened to those words of Jesus, then he wouldn't have feared so much the rest. You fear what other people say about you, you fear how you will appear in public, you fear uh, what, what impression people have, particularly if they ask you questions about your faith and that you need to say, yes, I love Jesus Christ and I follow him. Uh, it feels perhaps awkward or funny to say that until you recognize this is the Christ, the Son of God. Of course I follow him. We need not fear. And Peter need not have feared because we know who he is. He said so. Lord Jesus Christ, we go about in the world, we worry about our appearance. Lord, grant that as people listen to our words, as they, as they see our actions, grant that they might see you and, uh, and your power and glory, your grace and mercy. Not that they would see uh, that we need to impress them with ourselves and our abilities, our intellect, our achievements, uh, the wisdom of our words. Lord, fill our words today with, with your Holy Spirit, with compassion and love, so that others may see, yes, I have, I have seen him, uh, that they may know who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. No telling where we'll be tomorrow. Who knows? <laughs>